Hello Hello and welcome to Gag of the Millennial, millennial. where we talk about pop culture, current events, and spill the hot Darjeeling Satan right into your lap. Ooh, soldy moldy and straight to hell, bitch. Burn in hell. So, oh my gosh, we have a new little setup. We do indeed. It's um, Hopefully the audio sounds great for people who are listening on SoundCloud and iTunes and uh, Spotify as well. So, um, for today's episode, we are doing, you won't really know because I look normal, um, we're doing a spooky Halloween edition. Yes. Very much that. Very apropos. So we are going to be today, we're going to be chatting about ghosts, paranormal things, some things that maybe we have experienced, things that we believe or might, you know, not believe. Um, and it's it's going to be a, it's going to be a lot, girl. It's going to be We a love a spooky story. We, we love Halloween. Indeed. I love Halloween. It's my absolute favorite time of year. I get more excited for Halloween than any other holiday. Mm-hmm. Even though like now, like I don't do as much as I used to when I was younger. Same, but, same. But I still just love the whole feel. And I love like autumn leaves and like pumpkins and all the stuff that you see in the shops when they decorate it mm. and like there's like like fake spider webs everywhere and everything i feel like halloween is like made for the lgbt community yes yes like it i feel is. like That's it's reveal your ho- true scorpion yeah self. exactly it's our Zombie holiday women. it is our holiday it so. is it's just such a shame that we don't seem to be getting much of like uh autumn anymore it just literally goes like burning sunshine the depth of winter yeah it doesn't really it doesn't it's really it's such a shame so one of my um first kind of spooky experiences that i remember having is when i was uh, i must have been maybe about eight i'm not sure i must have been eight or nine if people doesn't know uh, i lived with my grandparents and my dad passed away when i was eight um and then we moved in with my grandparents very soon after that i remember one night it was it must have been about maybe six seven months after he passed away i'm not sure I, I, again i was a kid i can't remember exactly the time frame everything but i remember um so when my bedroom was is we slept me, me and my brother shared a bedroom and my bedroom was at the end of the corridor in the hallway in the um house and so if you ha- we would sleep with the door open because I was like spooked to being closed. I was a kid. And so the door would always be left open and you could see all the way down the hallway into, you know, the living room. That was how the, the house was set up. And I remember waking up one night. I, I don't remember the time. What, like, middle of the night it was like pitch black. Um, and I remember I could, I saw like someone, it looked like, like, someone was standing at the end of my hallway looking towards me. It did look like the description of what my dad would look like. It was very black. I couldn't like make out features or anything, but it was like a dark silhouette of someone kind of like looking like they were looking at me. And so I sort of w- wiped, wiped my eyes and stuff and was like, am I imagining this? Like, what, what's this shit going on? So I like wiped my eyes and stuff and it was still there. And then he like walked away. Oh. And so I was like, okay. So I kind of just went back to sleep and I was kind of still kind of half asleep. So like you don't really process completely everything that's going yeah. on. You kind yeah, of think yeah, it's yeah. sleepy. It, it wasn't at all. I didn't tell anyone. I don't know why I didn't tell anyone. Maybe because I, I don't know why. Why didn't I tell anyone? I didn't tell anyone this well, until when like... you were like a child, you don't always think, oh, I've got to tell someone. You're just kind of like, that happened. Yeah. Years and years and years and years and years later when I was an adult, I was having a conversation with my brother and I was telling, telling about the situation. I was like, by the way, when I was a kid, I remember seeing this blah, blah, blah. blah. We were talking about like ghost things on YouTube. Like, and so we would talk about this afterwards. And I was telling him the story. I was like, I woke up and I looked down the hallway and it looked like a man was like looking at me. And halfway through my story that I was telling, my brother said, stop. And I was like, what? We, he went, stop. And then he carried on the story exactly the same as it happened to me. Like just from halfway through my story, he was like, blah, blah, blah. and it turned out that he had had the same experience, like exactly the same. Well, like on the same night? Well, I don't know if it was the same night, oh. but he said that it had happened to him, mm. like exactly the same as it happened to me. And I was like, that's spooky. Like I, like, so for full disclosure, I do believe in ghosts and paranormal things. I'm not, I'm very open to that. And I, I do believe in ghosts and things, but like, so I am biased, but like the fact that he would stop me without me finishing my story and then say the same thing. Mm. It's quite, and then be like, it looked like dad, and then he walked away to the side, <coughs> and I was like, yeah, like what? And I know there was more details that I'm missing yeah, out here, but like course. he explained more things, and I was like, that that's literally exactly the same as what happened to me. And we kind of like had a weird sort of that was them like we were both like shivering, we, were, we had that, yeah. that weird like yeah. Woo! Yeah, that, um, chills down the spine, Gail. That was kind of my first experience of really something the paranormal, but like I don't think I really understood what ghosts and paranormal things were when I was that young. Yeah, like, I don't think you would at eight. Like, I've, I've, there's always those things where it's like, even when I was that young, if it's so, still a, a little bit now, like, I am afraid of the dark in some way. Oh, I am. I, I think, I think as well, living in London now, and I've lived here for so long, I'm so used to it not being pitch black. Yeah, like we were just saying, like, it doesn't get dark. Like, the streetlights are on. Yeah. Like, there's always light. Whereas when you start to go to, like, little towns in yeah. bum hell nowhere, it's like, I'm literally going to die. Well, it's also the thing with, like, noise. 
if I go to sleep now and it's dead silent, I hate it. Yeah. So when people say like the silence is deafening, I understand that, that yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because 100%. like I've, I've lived in the city where like it's noisy all the time. And like, yes, I don't live on a main road. So we do get some quietness, but like I can still hear things going There's all the time. There's still life happening. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, you know, we, we me and Luxaria have a, we have a, we call balcony time. Balcony and in the time. evening, we sit, Canada. We Canada. <laughs> so we sit out on the, the balcony and we'll like chat in the evening. And we, it's one of my favorite things that we do. But the thing People is, we're going to go, why did you say Canada? <laughs> why did you say <laughs> Canada? Canada. About old thumbnails. Um, but so you know, we would sit on the balcony and it's like what midnight, 1 a.m., and you can still hear people walking back and forth. There's talking. still buses, there's um, people coming home from work or going to work, yeah, there's so, like people around. So there's neighbors me, up and about and doing things. Agnes and Keith yeah. are frolicking in their pantaloons. Oh, so dear. if I ever um go somewhere and there's like silence, I hate it. So I have to put like noise on my phone. Like, the country. Why? The country is out. Retired from although, the although I will say, um, I know this is really ghostly, but the one thing I do miss about living in the city, which I don't get now, is being able to see the stars. Oh, one billion percent. I do feel like we should have like a, a yearly thing where it's like, on this night, we all turn off our lights and mm. we listen to some sort of radio broadcast about what we can see about yeah. us. That would be so good. Um, but, um, I do, but going I d- back to your little story... Sorry to interrupt. I just no, need no, to no, get no, 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 no. We need, we need, we need to get back. We need saying. to get back to the topic. Yeah. So this phenomenon of like people having the same dream or the same like sighting mm-hmm. or something is so. Well, it's not hugely common, but it is something that actually exists. It's a phenomenon that does that people do experience. Like, yeah. where like I'm sure you and I have had really creepy experiences. I mean, we finish each other's sentences, so it's not unusual to be like we had a very similar experience. Yeah. Because like I'll just be thinking about something and I'll just go gout, and I'll be like, I'm sure you've done the same thing. Like that. Yeah, How yeah. spooky coincidence. Yeah, is that? yeah, yeah. But I do also want to say that while I don't necessarily believe in the ghostly world and paranormal mm-hmm. uh, stuff, I do understand people's experiences and. Like, what even is a ghost? If you think about what a ghost is, like, way back to the start of the conversation, what even is a ghost? (laughs) A ghost is something like an emotional visitation by something, perhaps in your periphery of your vision or an experience. Yeah. So... Just because it's in your head doesn't mean it's not real. You've still had that experience. Yeah. Well, g- granted, you know, like the light may not have actually been there and going, Hello, Deirdre, yeah. I'm your lost puppy from yeah. when you were nine. Oh, you know Deirdre, puppy wuppy. Yeah. Oh, spook, spook. Mm-hmm. But you know what I mean? So I do believe that like you can have those experiences and they can still have a profound effect on you. Yeah. Because I've got a handful of experiences, especially when it comes to like a passed away relative. Because yeah. um, I've had a hard 10 years, girl. <laughs> I've had a hard time. I've lost quite a few people that are very close to my heart. My heart breaks occasionally when I think about it. Mm. So back in 2012, I suddenly lost my mumsy, my mother dearest. And she was battling multiple sclerosis for mm-hmm. all of my life. So um, at that point, I was 20, 22, 23, I think, mm-hmm. way back then. Way back when I was a nipper. And essentially, she just... Got really sick one day and she went into hospital. We found out she had three different types of very advanced cancer. And um, she passed, she went in on the Tuesday and passed away on the Thursday. So very it was quick, really yeah. very sudden, very quick. And I always say this to myself. I'm always like, I wish I could take a year of my life as a child and spend it with my mum now as an adult. Oh, Because oh, I never had yes, that experience. Yes. My mum never really. So ever, since I was about 13, she was bedridden. So she never got to experience my life with me. Like I never yeah. got to go, I'm just going to have a coffee with my mum. Like never got to have any of that yeah. experience. I would love to trade that. However, I get extremely vivid dreams. I'm a person, I'm a real dreamer. I always have been. I get, in fact, sometimes my dreams are so bloody intense. I wake up more exhausted than when I go to bed. <laughs> and literally yeah. in the morning, I'm like, I might as well just have stayed up all night and just gone, hello, and made several videos <laughs> because it would have been more productive than trying to sleep with this literal, like, intense dream happening inside my brain. Yeah. I do get visitations from my mum. It Granted, it is, like, ludicrous things, like we're playing a mini golf with giant poodles or something stupid like that. I mean, that was last night for me. Oh, well. Mm. So I do always kind of feel a little bit, like, spooked and weird when I have dreams like that about yeah. my mum because, like, she was such an important presence in my life. Mm-hmm. I'm still dealing with that now. So I had a dream towards the end of last year, just before I was going into my exams and I had a dream with my mum and usually she doesn't say anything to me because it's not like a fully realised version of her it's just like a shell or something and she said a sentence to me that really stuck with me and I'm drawing a blank right now and it's heartbreaking because I would love to share it with you all it was something so poignant in my life at that point that I remember like waking up and being like I actually feel okay. Yeah. Like, I actually feel okay that I've had this dream with that experience. It was yeah. some something, because I had an exam that day as well, and I'd woken up extremely early from just this dream, and it was like, I had to get to university for like nine or something, and I'd woken up at like four, 
And I was just like, I'm like fully awake after that experience. And I just like did a bit of studying. And then I ended up getting a first class degree. So I'm really happy oh, with good. that. But it was just yes, such queen. a weird experience that's left me feeling kind of like, I don't know. Do I believe in ghosts? Not necessarily. But do I believe I've had an experience in which it has affected my life from something perceived as a ghost yes so what i think is very interesting about ghosts now i have a few more things i want to talk about mm, please do as well but i think like considering like we can't the, our senses are very much limited in certain ways like you know there's certain frequencies we can't hear things we can't see yeah. um i think sometimes it's kind of i feel like there is definitely more to the world than just you're here you live die gone that's it nothing ever happens and it's kind of just well absolutely what were you doing before you got here yeah like what, what where was my consciousness like how did my consciousness get into my body like how i don't know it's like it's a weird thing and i think sometimes like especially like what spooks me the most of anything is when you see like videos of like animals reacting to things that people can't see mm. and i'm like what like are cats they? that are like and they're staring, and like i've seen so many videos of like dogs who are like scared to go in per certain parts of the house and then like they'll, they'll bark at like the wall and there's literally nothing there and like you see like sometimes even like babies you'll see them like following something in the sky and like there's nothing literally there and I always wonder like what are they experiencing in that time like is there actually are they just glitching like, yeah. or, or like a is little there, bit of a glitching is, 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 is there actually something there that they're seeing that we can't see well this goes into the realm of like spirituality doesn't it yeah. and spirituality is very much one of those areas that's like there's not we can talk about our experiences but there's no real like concrete anything that says one way or the other like same thing with dreams like are dreams real well they, they're nothing you can like physically touch and handle but you can explain them to other people and yeah. some people would be like yeah all my tea fell out yesterday as well goes fucking horrible oh my yeah. god i also feel like sometimes you not premon not premonitions but like you so also so you know this already but my my grandmother died of cancer in 2007 um and you said you said about how you wish you could your mum could mm -hmm. like see you now as an adult my grandma is another one that i wish i could like show her like who i've become because i was only uh was i i was still 16 when she died i'm 30 now for context so she had cancer and she was kind of going in a hospital now and then for like chemo and things and um it was very normal for her to be doing it yeah and so she went to the hospital and uh, my grandmother uh, my grandfather went to go visit her in and this was like just one of the one of the days in the morning and i don't know what it was that happened on that day nothing was really out of the ordinary um and you know there was no sort of like come in quick she's dying or anything like that it was just like a normal routine day but i woke up that morning and when my grandfather went in i knew that she was going to die i don't know what it was about it but there was something about that day that there was some kind of like energy or yeah. vibe and i was like when he went and i was like she's not coming home now and i i don't know what it was and i like could that ever like can you really you can't really explain what that is i don't know well there's this concept of like the gut feeling isn't it yeah. like your intuition and the amount of times my gut feeling has been absolutely spot on about something and mm -hmm. it's just like whether you go with that or not it's fascinating because it's not really like a premonition as such like on the 18th of march mm -hmm. 1482 the queen like yeah. it's nothing like that it's very much just like a slight feeling like a somber feeling of like yeah. i think this is going to happen or yeah, this has happened or really something's weird. wrong i can't explain it but and she died that day and it was just like i don't know it's it, it was a strange thing i was like so when 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 when, when i was told i wasn't shocked mm. which i think took them back a bit because they were like oh, you're not reacting as i thought you were going to like <gasps> but like i was mm. like i just knew I, it was strange like obviously i was sad and stuff but like it was a very strange moment but talking about ghostly things mm. so very quickly after my nan passed away we got rid of all of her stuff gave it to charity because it's what she wanted um and also just That's for like quite nice and noble isn't it i think it's okay to hold on to things but i think sometimes it can especially if you hold on to too much like you don't you don't change rooms it becomes or leave it. clutter yeah. rather than a memory and it, and it sort of then it sort of drags you down like if, if my granddad was to keep going into his bedroom every single evening and it looked identical and all of her stuff was there like i think it would just upset him more yeah absolutely um because they were married for like, well, 50 years or something. I don't know exactly. Uh, no. Diamond. Um, Diamond. Very, very, very quickly we got rid of all of the stuff. It was good. And so like years later, I would constantly, randomly from like once a month maybe, would just be like walking through the, the hallway, walking through the living room. And I would just suddenly get this like, overwhelmingly strong scent of her perfume mm. we obviously got rid of all the stuff years before but it was so strange how like now and then i would still get this like overwhelming sort of smell of her perfume and uh one morning i remember coming out to the living room one time and where she used to sit in the living room 
Uh, we had those like these like metal reclining chairs because she oh, could yeah. move very well, yeah, so yeah, it was yeah. easier for her just to put her legs up and stuff. And the set the seat that she would always sit in, the chair was completely reclined, as if like she had been lying there like she used to do all the time. And like that, it, that's not something that can happen on its own because it was quite a strong button you really had to push in and hold in to make it happen. Um, it's never done, it never did it before. It never did How it again weird. afterwards. And it was like this one time it would just randomly happen. And she didn't have very good hearing. She would constantly be turning the TV up all the time. And sometimes we'd just be, me and my grandma would just be sitting there like watching something together and the TV would just suddenly start turning itself up. Like randomly, no one's pressing anything. The controller's like on the, on the table. Like, and it's just, oh, it's, right. it's just wow. like all these little, I think my grandmother was the main thing that I've really yeah. sort of experienced the most of. I don't know. Like, I don't know what that was. And especially like, I think, I think the thing- Yeah, like, how would you even describe what that sort of an experience is? Just like, it is just like a slightly paranormal ghostly experience. Yeah. Isn't it? And I think as well, like the main thing that makes me go like, oh, it is the fact that I could smell her perfume. And I'm like, I don't know. There's nothing in the house that's hers. And again, because this is years later, like res- you wouldn't have the, smells yeah, would yeah. not be in the house. Like it's very strange. I don't, I don't know how you know how to explain that. I actually understand what you mean when you say this, because I have a, an experience that's very, very, very similar. I must say. So my best friend ever passed away in 2015 and uh, Sinestra, for those of you who know, those of you who don't know, her name was Sinestra. She was my trans sister. So she was like, a bougie woman. Like, I think we all know she was a very bougie woman. Mm-hmm. She's very wealthy from her escapades, <laughs> shall we say. <laughs> she had a lot of money, girls. And she used to smoke this vape or used to have a... What do you, do you say smoking a vape? Or is it vaping a vape? Vaporizing? You don't say smoking. She used would, to vaporize things Yeah, frequently. you would just say you would just say she was vaping. She was vaping. So she vaped. She, I don't know what this thing was that she had. So judging by her, it must have been some like bougie thing that's imported nonsense. It's like, oh, it's a thousand pounds just because I can. <laughs> It was this intense, <laughs> like, cherry vanilla. But it was like, there was something else in it as well. Because it was nothing like, like, you know when you get like a waft of like fake vape smell and it's just like that, like, who is vaping near me? Please stop. Yeah, yeah. Like, you chimney cosplay. It wasn't really like that. It was just a bit like, very expensive smelling. She was the only person I knew that sm- that vaped this scent. And in two th- early 2009, so this is like four years after she passed away. I was walking under the arches at London Waterloo. 2009. Sorry, 2019. No. <laughs> I'm a like, time-travelling demon woman of the future. Hail Satan. 2019, girl. Early 2019. You know the arches underneath uh, Waterloo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a place called the Archduke or something, or Black and Blue Steak or whatever, which is weirdly enough. Actually, this story is getting even more bizarre as I'm telling you, because I'm just realising something. That is the last place I ever saw Sinestra Oh, alive, gosh. Was at this restaurant. I'm just walking past it under the arches. I got a huge walk of this bougie cherry vanilla vape smell. And I remember I was by myself. I think, I don't even know what I I was doing in 2019. I don't even know what I was doing, where I was going, but I was in London for some reason. And I just remember like immediately smelling it and it brought me instantly back to her. So just to cut in, because you say about that, isn't it so strange how your body never forgets smells? And like, it it was almost like smells is like the best way to kind of like flood you with emotion. Yeah, Yeah. like it is so strange. It absolutely ruined, it messed me up for like a little while. It messed me, ruined my day. And like even realizing, obviously at the time I didn't realize that I'd walked past the last place I'd seen her alive as well. So that's Mm -hmm. even more insane now thinking back at it because I haven't really even thought about it. So this scent of like just hit me like a train. I remember being like, well, my day is absolutely ruined now, Mm -hmm. girls. And I just sort of sat down and I had a little like moment of just thinking like, God, I, I actually really miss you. Yeah. And that's the part, like, I can't even talk about it too much because I will start crying right now, but wailing like a banshee. But my heart kind of broke that day and I still it's still broken now. Like I don't think it'll ever be fixed. But it was just one of these things where it's like so weird and haunting. It's it's like it haunted me. Yeah, it's, kind yeah, of yeah. experience with that scent. Has anyone else got any experiences with scent specifically? Because yeah, Because that's sense. one of those ones that drives me absolutely loopy. I always think it's strange sometimes, like, because so I used to, people who don't know, I used to work in retail. So I was in the shop front. I used to wear like work on like the self checkout tills in my supermarket, and I remember there was one woman who used to come in all the time, and she used to wear the same uh, like uh, like spray stuff as yeah. like a woman. So a woman in my old canteen in my school when I was back in like Saint Sidwell School in Exeter. Um, it's now See? been completely changed, but. Uh, so my, my primary school in Exeter. And so there was a woman who used to work in the canteen mm. who would wear this perfume. And I had not smelled it in years. And I remember when she, when she started, this other woman started coming into my shop, obviously when, you know, years and years later. It was so, when I saw her and I could smell and I was like, 
Wait, what's that? What's what is that? This? I'm and eight years old asking was, for cake. Exactly. And it suddenly took it back to being in the tuck shop, in the canteen. In the tuck in the, shop. In the, in the oh tuck my God. shop. I love in the, the tuck canteen, shop. buying like cheesy nibbles, they were called. Um, cheesy nibbles. <laughs> cool. Oh, I love a and, cheesy nibble. Um, it was, it's so strange how smells do that. And like, if it wasn't for that smell, I would not have had that feeling. Mm. Like, because. I couldn't have gone back. You know, the school's the school where I used to go um, has been completely remodernized now. So, that's, so even if I was to visit there, like it wouldn't give me the same because it's completely different. Different so vibe scale. Nothing else would have reminded me about that unless it was that smell. Mm-hmm. And even though it had been like twenty years later, it's so weird that it's. Oh, don't you dare say something like twenty years later. That's <laughs> hideous. I was not in primary school twenty years ago. Spoiler alert: I was actually going into high school twenty years ago. <laughs> same so it's strange that like 20 years later i would have this smell and all of a sudden it's like oh wow i'm back in my tuck shop in two uh, in like 1998 like so another spooky story that happened to me when i was seven i want to say maybe 17 was i 17 Mm. um so one of my friends in devon um, he's called will hi will he watches these videos oh hello um so we i i remember this was yeah i was about about 17 18 and we were in his uh uh, kitchen and so he lived in quite an old house it was like when you think of like spooky old houses that you would think would be haunted it would be his house like you would think about his kind of house yeah it it was his house so we were in the kitchen and we were getting ready to go to sixth form um because he was driving us there and so we're getting ready but like eating food blah 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 and we could hear someone walking above like in the room above the kitchen and we were like, what's that? And so where the where the room above the kitchen was his dad's bedroom. It was Satan. It was Satan. So it was his dad's bedroom. So we were like, oh, it's just his dad. Like we <laughs> Oh Papa, the walking first, around upstairs yeah, again, are we? Yeah, exactly. Pacing. So really like, out. bring out the mirror out. We didn't really think of anything of it. So we were like, so he was like, oh yeah, it's just my dad. And Three seconds later, after him saying that, his dad walked in the front door of the house because he was like outside. Like and we, we we just sort of stopped for two seconds and looked at each other and was just like... Creaky woman upstairs. Um, what was that? As we told his dad and his dad went upstairs, but not, obviously nothing was there. No one else was in the house. And we were just like, what the fuck? And like, I get like old houses creak and like pipes and stuff. But like, it, this was like prominent footsteps. This wasn't just a... Uh, a bang like it was step 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 are you step, sure you step, weren't step, like step, being step. burgled <laughs> and just like i'm coming to get you barbara yeah, you're, you're ignorant, you're ignorant. <laughs> um yeah no we weren't being burgled but like that was that was a time when i was like oh like that's spooky but then his dad used to say that he would see spooky things in the house all the time i think a lot of the things that like our american audience don't really realize is just how old some of our houses are mm-hmm. like america when was america founded like no, that's independence was 1776, wasn't it? Is it about 1695 when whoever appeared at Boston, yeah, like America, or America's in like a few hundred we, years old. Yeah, like even... we have houses that are a thousand years old here. Like mm-hmm. it's not uncommon to go to like an old village and see houses and like cottages that were made in like the 1100s. Yeah, like that's not rare. But where, 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 where my where I lived, Newton Saint Sires, loads of the cottages in that in that whole area was like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. I was just going to say, loads of houses in that hole. <laughs> yeah, loads, loads. Yeah, I lived in a hole. But like loads of the houses where I lived. And all the, the doors the, are like three feet tall because yeah. everyone was a munchkin back then. And all the and all the, yeah, all the houses in the village that I lived were all disgustingly old. Yeah. The thing is <laughs> like, though, like I can totally, totally get that because like if we're going to be honest with you all, like one of the things that actually does give me the creeps and actually frightens me like legit is like home invasion. The mm-hmm. idea of someone like defiling your sanctity. Oh God, we, we were burgled in 2001. It was, it still, it still stick with me now. I still have like paranoia about being robbed. That's absolutely not like I, whenever I picture home invasions, I'm always like, have you seen the film like The Collector or whatever it's called? The Bone Collector or The Collector? I think so. Where it's just like stringing everyone up in their house mm-hmm. and they're like, I'm dying, Gail. Basically, that's like hideous and I don't want to be a part of that. Thank no, you. See thank you all later. You. Have you ever like experienced something over someone else's house and they've been like a believer and you've just kind of been like, don't be so silly, but like to them, they're like, it's a ghost, Gail. <sighs> I'm trying to rack my brains and think of this, but I don't think I have. Most of my experiences have not actually been in the paranormal. They've been in the very real and actually been very frightened. Like the time I was stabbed. That was very frightening. Mm. Let's not go on about it. No. Wrong wrong topic. Yeah, we're just doing it. It's going to be a gag of the millennial just called Stabbed coming out soon. Absolutely not. Can you imagine? Terrific. You can talk about it. What is it? 38 times you've been stabbed? Yep. 
no, well, yeah, well, yeah, I guess if you add in the ones I've got, don't have anymore, mm, yeah. She's referring to piercings, if yeah. people haven't picked up on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I haven't not been just getting stabbed. No, no. <laughs> I just walk around the high, high street, just constant just abuse. Like, I've been stabbed, I've girl. been stabbed, girl. Beth is gagged. Beth is gagged. I've been stabbed. No, look, Beth. Oh, not just Beth. Beth. Oh, <laughs> some woman called Beth. Oh, Beth, the meth addict. Beth um, loves her meth. Yes, yeah, what's happening? Should we get back on top? Yeah, what's up? <laughs> Something I want to touch on talking about how normal things and like reality and what they could be. So I, uh, I think it's very interesting that like from your perspective as mm-hmm. a science person, things like dread, feelings of dread and you think, Oh, science is going to happen thing. It can speak you out, but like it can be something as simple as like a sound wave that you can't hear. Yes. That I can suppose, give yeah. you that feeling of dread. Um, there's also things like some, if you inhale gas, it can make you hallucinate, but oh, you don't realize that yes. you're doing it. It's that kind of like, so like uh, poisons, toxins, and deadly neurotoxins. Yeah, exactly. And Thanks, I think, Glados. I remember watching a thing about ghosts of like trains. It was like ghosts of London and things in like the underground. And there was this one place where people always used to say that it was like uh, very prominent to see ghosts. And it was something yeah. that people would always see. And so this this research went down and just look. And it turns out that there was a leak in one of the pipes, oh. but it was so subtle that it was harder for people to pick up on it. They didn't really think about it. That was why they were getting this like feeling of dread. And like, they would sometimes like have eerie things in here, sort of, they would mm. see things moving around. And it's because they would like, they were inhaling this gas and they just didn't realize that that's yes, what they were inhaling. Absolutely. Well, this is, there's also a, th- a running theory that, you know, like uh, the Salem witch trials, mm-hmm. like there was, uh, so the Salem river, the river that supplied uh, Salem, apparently it was like riddled with a specific type of mushroom that grew upstream. That was just like seeping its spores oh, into the river. My God. And like, literally these people would be drinking the water and wa- washing their children in it and being like, Oh my God, a witch is poisoning our crops. When actually it's just like a very normal Pharaoh thing for the, the soil to do, but they're hallucinating a lady on her broomstick coming to curse you. And then they'd be like, now we're going to put you all in the river and see if you float or die, actually. And if you float, you are a witch. And if you drown, you're also a witch. But what a shame, you go to heaven now. I find the whole concept of this witch trial thing so ludicrous. Like, I get that back in those days, like, people were just mad. Yeah. (laughs) And then you put LSD into that mixture and people are just extra mad. But, like, I I, I feel like it it gets to a stage where people are like... Accusing and doing witch hunting because they don't want people to look at them. Is yeah, that kind I of like, oh, if, if we shout, you're the witch, they won't say that I'm a witch. Because, yeah. like, realistically, there's no, there was no proof about any of this well, the, stuff. Well, the, the, the sad reality is, honestly, if a man did it, oh, it's a miracle. He's Jesus, the second coming. If a woman does it, burn her, burn her alive, water to wine, immediately kill her. I mean, unfortunately, that is a very true and statement. It all comes from Lilith. Yeah. Oh, demon Dirty Lilith. I love a bit of Lilith. I do. My favorite woman of the Bible. The first one who went, see you all later. See you all later. <laughs> um, Subservient to I don't think so. One thing I want to ask you is, do you have any really fond Halloween memories? Like anything that sticks out from your years? You go, oh, that was a really good Halloween. That was a lot of fun. Like, even as a kid. Uh, I have a couple of fond Halloween memories. So, for example, the first time that I went trick-or-treating, actually, mm-hmm. my dad always saw trick-or-treating as, like, begging. And he was always like, you're not going outside. You're going to beg as a costume while we peasants. Basically, yes, yes, well, we were. Well. However, he w- I don't know why he was so adamant about it, but there we go. So my mum snuck me out once, and I went over to a friend's, ha- friend's house, Halloween sleepover, but we actually went out trick-or-treating. Oh, we love and a I, deceitful we, yeah, I was ve- I was very deceitful mm, as a child. Yes. Literally face down, drunk somewhere at 2am going, I'm just to be friends, don't <laughs> worry about me. I'm literally paralytic. I must have been about 14 at this time, and I was hanging, I was like hanging out with like my friend's in the same year, but they were in like a different class to me. And I went over to their house and it was somewhere in Brighton and we would just like trick or treat around the little local area. I'd never done it before, it's so exciting. I dressed as a vampire because Ooh. I had nothing. So I was literally just like a little bit of red liner coming from the eye. And, like, we love a vampire. And I was like, oh, I'm a scary lady. And that was the first time I ever went trick or treating. It was just kind of like this weird experience. Wait, how old were you again? Sorry. I was about 14. Okay. So I was, this is, I, I think it's like actually like the only time I've been trick or treating really because we can't really go now, can we? I mean, like, I mean, like why is there people at the door asking for? for food <laughs> what's wrong with this so it was the first time and I actually remember my my good friend Helen the purple soul she got one of those football you know those like football chocolate sweets but it's covered in foil she yeah, like, yeah. was a gobstopper she just popped it straight oh, in and no. like chewed it up and then she was like coughing and choking on foil for like three days it was Disgusting. hilarious yeah so I have this really fond memory of it because after we went out trick-or-treating I ended up with like quite a bag of sweets and literally had just like stuffed my face full I was sick with sweeties and then we literally just sat and watched Halloween films for like until like 
10 o'clock and then my mum mm-hmm. come and got me and it was absolutely amazing because I'd never had that experience before then because well, like, being an only f- child there's no reason I find it funny that you were doing it at 14 because to me that seems very old it to is, be trick or treating it is very old realistically because it would I, I don't know we must have literally looked like a a gang of teenagers coming on my lawn. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's quite frightening. Yeah, it's because I think I stopped trick-or-treating when I was about 13, I think, was the last time that was I did it. Was it like a yearly occasion for you? Oh, yeah. So we, we, we lived in, like, obviously our little village was a very close-knit group. So, like, mm. it was always, you just did it in our yeah. little village together. That's quite a um, sweet idea. So, like, every year that we would, I would go with my friends, we would go around and do it. Um, but obviously, as we got older, like, we didn't want to go out at, like, because in in, ha- in Halloweenish time in the UK, it gets dark at like five. Yeah, that's, so like yeah. kids are going out at like half five, six, and, and by and the time like spooky nighttime goblins exactly. Scale. And so by the time we were kind of like getting into like teenage years, it was like we don't want to go out like half past five. It's hardly spooky time. Yeah. Um. So and it's always a school night or whatever. Yeah, exactly. You're like, now cast out till I so, oh, fail me English. Uh, yeah, it's got my exam scale. Oh. Um. So we we kind of didn't really we stopped when we were sort of about thirteen fourteen. Um, but I remember one 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 year, my friend Rachel at the time, we were we were like going trick or treating around our area. And Is this the Rachel from dating? No, it's not Rachel from dating. Oh. Although I did I did go out with this girl, but like she, this was back in two. You we, were prolific. I was. You? I was you were such a, a womanizer. Slut. That's um, what Britney Spears wrote her song about you. You yeah. were such a slut. <laughs> yes. Um. No. So this is the girl called Rachel. We were friends. With her. She lived in my village. And we'd gone to primary school together. But anyway, she so, lived in my yeah, yeah. Ooh, disgusting. Ooh, no. um, so we we were we were trick or treating around our area, and she uh, one of her cousins lived in Exeter, um, around this place called Hevertry. Oh my god! And so we Hevertry. <laughs> what sort of Satan cult is this? We are so the ones from. She Hevitry. was like, "Let's go trick or treating around there. Our mum, my mum, will drive us to there, and we'll go meet my cousin." And this is like what. 2002 was I about 12 maybe 12 years old um and so we were we were, went to this her cousin's house went around the entire estate that we had been and it's like it was massive because obviously Exeter is quite a big city mm-hmm. so we were around the city but Exeter is also really beautiful it's a shame about the people that live there but yeah there's a, a lot of uh, there's, city. I couldn't live there again um so we were, on the, we were on this whole village like trick-or-treating in Exeter and so when we went back to Rachel's cousin's house we were like that was a lot of houses do you think if we put a mask on and went round again, we would be able to get to buy us as many sweets. So, oh, you naughty! We were at his house, children, and so he gave us like masks that we took from his like little brother and sister. Mm-hmm. So me, Rachel, and him. I think I think his name was Tom. We went out trick or treating again around the entire estate with masks on, and the people had no idea what was it. Oh was my on. god! And because they're seeing so many kids, it's a massive. Sit- like you're not going to remember hundreds of children that come into your house. Ocean's nineteen, um, the great heist. <laughs> and so we we went around the whole thing again and got like double the amount of sweets, and it was incredible. And I was like, I can't trick or treat ever again now because it'll never be as good as this. That's, I mean, that's true. Did you, tran- was your transformation into morbidly obese children complete after <laughs> yes, that? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, diabetes. 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 Um, but it, I, that was one of my funny memories. I think it was really funny. Like, we just ended up like getting twice the amount of sweets. See, because I lived in Brighton, which was a city, we never really had trick-or-treaters come to us. But also my dad was the kind of person that was like, no, turn all the lights off, even if we're sitting indoors. Don't want them banging on my door. How dare they? I remember, like, he sounds exactly like that, can I tell you? Obviously mm-hmm. not. But we ended up, one one um, Halloween, we ended up going out somewhere. I don't remember what we were doing. I think we were just going out to, like, you know, like, parents have friends. And you just go out and go over there, and then it, they're your auntie and uncle, even though they're absolutely no relation to you whatsoever. Yeah, 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 yeah. One of those situations. Um, and we came back as someone who'd thrown eggs, flour, and jam at our front door. And my dad was like, ah, ah, it's disgusting. Ow, ow. And it was absolutely, I remember being like a child and my mum I mean, was like, go and sit in the car. And my dad was just literally like having a fit on the front door, like at like nine, like 10 at night or something like in the dark, like, ow, oh, his eggs on everything. Ow. Oh. I want a, eggs a, on everything. That's a very fond memory I have Ooh. of Halloween. Yes. I, I, I do love Halloween. I think it's fun. Because like, eat, I, Especially now as an adult, what I find funny about Halloween is like, I think it's funny because like we get invited to like events now around Halloween time. Like we went to... Oh, we pumpkin carved, didn't we? we? we recently, that, what was that? Warner Brothers It was. Something. I think it was Warner Brothers invited me and like Sarah to like a pumpkin carving class thing, which was hilarious. And we, we were getting like just drinking there, like pump, trying to pumpkin carve. It was an absolute mess, but that was fun. And a bit. I, um, I also, so this is a bit controversial. Some, some people are a bit funny about it. I think it was the Brompton Cemetery in London. They were doing like a screening of the nun, 
Like, a oh, couple, was it, was it, was it, why are people a bit sensitive about this? Because it's in a graveyard. People are going, oh, it's not right. But it was like, I mean, the, the bodies have been dead for hundreds. I was going to say, hundreds. is it a real graveyard or is it just like no, it's a, a, it's a real graveyard, graveyard? But it's like it's like a tourist attraction graveyard. So like, it's like a really famous one where like the bodies have been there for like four or five hundred years yeah. like there's no you don't get buried there now it's yeah. like a um it might not be the brompton cemetery there's there's a few in london that are like famous and so we went to the cemetery and they'd like decked it out in the end where there, there's like it wasn't like in so the graveyard you would kind of walk through and at the top of it it was like a color it almost looked like a coliseum shape and it was kind of there were no graves in this area where they where, 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 where the screening was but they put speakers all along this sort of like coliseum areas there was like actors coming like running around and oh stuff amazing when we watched the nun regardless of how good the film was um but yeah. it was just the whole atmosphere having speakers around us we were in like the middle of a graveyard and i thought that was like so much fun like it was so good um and i really enjoyed that but like, i think as an adult like now I don't get involved as much as I used to. Like yeah, I, I don't same. get, I don't really get dressed up and go out clubbing and stuff because it, everything is just so packed. Oh my Everywhere god, everywhere is so full, and it's just like you. you and it's so expensive. Yeah, and like trying to like, and you try and like get there whilst half dressed as a zombie that's like yeah. spewing your guts up, and then people on the tube are like, "I think we should call the police." Yeah, and it, it becomes a thing. But I. Do you know what I've never done? I've never done a Halloween house party. And that is something oh. I would love to do at some point in my life. Maybe not this year, because, you know, we're all going to die. But there we go. We're, oh, it adds to the spoke factor. So, social distancing. 2016 and 2017, we and Callum had hosted, like, a Halloween party Oh, should I just time travel? Yeah, I'll do you want to come go. back? Yeah. yeah. And that was so much fun. We had really cool... We made, we made like, a burn book. I mean, like... Put, put, I've seen the vlog. We, we put I've photos everything. We had, like, a photo booth. We put, like, we put, like green crepe paper over all of the lights in the house because now we've got coloured lights, but back then we didn't have it. And so, like, all we made all the lights green um, and, like, we had, like, a best-dressed Halloween, um, like... Co uh, competition yeah and we had like halloween players that just played like spooky music and it was so much fun we did it for two years um we haven't done it again since because it's a lot of work but like it is honestly it is a lot and of work. money the amount yeah. of money that we spent on these parties well callum mainly did that i didn't have money back then really mm. um now she's a bougie <laughs> now, woman. Now, now I'm a bougie woman. Um, no, I'm not. Please don't think I am because I'm not. <laughs> now I'm a bit. No. Do you know what? I, I had to make a disclaimer the other day because I keep saying I'm a woman on the game. No. And it's like, I actually have to tell you all, I'm not a woman on the game. I keep saying it, but I'm, don't you dare. Don't you, you stop talking right now. <laughs> I, I'm about to say, I'm a woman on the game. I'm not, even though I say constantly no. that I am. Although no. You, you are incontinent. Um, I am. I, yeah, I will agree yeah, with that. Yeah. I'm just sitting in a puddle right now. Oh gosh! So we actually—I want... I need to disclaim that I'm not actually sticking a puddle no, on the no. right continent. Just um, for everyone who's listening, do you have any Halloween like, uh, uh, what's the word? Like traditions? Like, is there something you love to do every Halloween or would love uh, to do every so, Halloween? So I mean, it's a, it's a little bit um more cliche but like me and Callum always do like a pumpkin carving video on YouTube yes that's, that's true like, we didn't do it last year because our time schedule couldn't really sync up to make it happen um, so and, gear gear. and because of how hot last year was the pumpkin the bloody the 31st of October last year was a heat wave. It was, it was, it was like 30 was degrees. Nuts. People were on the beach, like sunbathing in Satan. But the, the problem was like so many of the, like the pumpkin crops got fucked mm -hmm. because of, because of how hot it had been. Um, so like we didn't actually really get any good pumpkins anyway. So we were like, do you know what? Like we're just going to leave it for this year. Yeah. Um, but that's something I always do. That is quite now. fun. I tried to do, so I did a pumpkin carving video last year with, uh, Corey. We did a little pump, pump. <laughs> <laughs> that was a disgusting just... you did a cum punch <laughs> like what the hell jesus christ so i did a video where i didn't punch Corey's cum <laughs> <laughs> where i didn't do that we carved a pumpkin but um and i also gave him like a little spooky halloween makeover that was quite fun it's the first time i've ever really done anything dedicated at uh, christmas at uh, pumpkin <laughs> What's wrong with um, G Oh God! <laughs> Dedicated a pumpkin. She's gone mad. She's lost the plot, babe. Halloween, babes. but I do. I have a really fond memory of Halloween actually, and it was in 2014. I just moved to Kingston in London, and Google sent me an email saying, "Can we have your uh, home address, please? We've got a present for you for Halloween." And I was like, "Oh my God." Google has a present for me. Mm. I'm very spooked. Jar of spiders. Yes. Could you imagine? I'd be like, it's just bees. <laughs> a bag of bees. Release the bees. <laughs> absolutely hideous. No, they sent me a pumpkin, but it came on like the 8th of November. And I was like, they were oh, like, can yes, you please carve this pumpkin? Me, yeah. So I ended up contacting Google and being like, do you want me to actually like still film a pumpkin carving? I could do it like 
spooky we November, love, December love, pumpkin. Yeah. Like, oh, you could have done, done a Krampus Christmas. I could have. Like, I could. I could have done pumpkin. This is V for Vendetta. Yeah. What was his name? Who blew up the Houses of Parliament? What? Uh, Guy Fawkes. I had John Bon Jovi in my mind for some reason. Yeah, I could do. Um, it's Guy my life. life, and I'll blow it up, <laughs> girls. <laughs> Just Bon Jovi being this like really faggy kind of it's my life girls. Yeah, so I got in contact with them and I was like, do you still want me to do it? Because, you know, it's November like the 8th. Do you want it? And they were like, no, (laughs) you can have the pumpkin and the camera. So because you mentioned Google, I want to quickly say one thing that I do really, really miss that we don't have anymore. um, Now, unfortunately, you didn't get to experience one of these. You you went to a few parties from them. I did indeed. I hated every single one. (laughs) I loved, loved, loved the old Halloween parties that YouTube used to put on here in London. So we have we have a YouTube space here in London where um, it's kind of not... I don't, I don't really enjoy it anymore. It's kind of more corporate thing. Yeah. Um, but 2015, uh, 16, 17... Was it, I think 18 as well, but I don't think I went to the 18 one. They threw like Halloween parties and they were so much fun. They would like decorate the whole YouTube space in like spooky things. They'd have actors walking around scaring people. Spooky There'd be like woman. loads of like spooky activities to do and like they'd like a photo booth that had like spooky things in and that, that, so many different things. And like they, they, one of my fondest memories of like first moving to London mm-hmm. was like getting involved with like the YouTube space and actually getting friends with all the people who used to work there. And like, because now I'm, I'm at a stage where like it, you kind of... I don't, I don't need to, I'm not going to the classes anymore because I know everything that they've yeah, taught or like, yeah, I don't yeah. go to these meetings and events because like I've done it all. Um, but back then it was all new and exciting and they contacted me saying like, like they wanted to work with me on things. And so me and Callum went there and they used to have these really cool events. I do really miss that because that was like a, a really fond memory. I think, I think a lot of it isn't entwined in my love memory, I guess, because of first moving to London yes, and the connection of that, that, those events and stuff. And I would, we would all get dressed up and there'd be like a group of 10 of us all going to the YouTube space to get drunk and be like Halloween-y. See, I um, was constantly invited to these things because I had no one to go with. I yeah. was like, uh, so I did break my like rule of being like an embarrassed, socially anxious wreck and go like once or twice. But I was just like, I hate this. Like everyone's there with their personal assistants literally going, so how many numbers do you have? And I was like, it depends I, yeah, I actually have more than all of you, but like I'm here for fun. I don't care about work. The th- the thing is, it's like because you, I remember you went to one of like the silver events that they had, which yeah. is for people who have over hundred thousand subscribers. I went to their Christmas party as well, oh, and I went to. I had, there was something else as well, but the last one that we went to was the LGBT one. They're yeah, like we went to a, we went we went to a Pride party at uh, there, and that was all right because we, 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 we had a we had a we had a great laugh. fun. We and got a lovely was, picture, although I'm morbidly obese. And here. that was that was last summer, so that was really that was not last. summer. Yes, it was last summer when the world before it ended. Yeah, it was it was last summer because um, we we had a great fun there. But yeah, so I do miss our little Halloween parties. What do you guys do? For yeah, your what Halloween's? are your Halloween plans? What are you doing, guys? I mean, obviously this year is a bit different. So like, are you doing any? Anything special or having like a Zoom Halloween party? Zoom, oh my god, can you imagine? <laughs> I'm stock. Can I just interject and say the stock price of Zoom has gone astronomical? Oh, I can imagine. Thank you for listening to this podcast you asked you. Yeah, hopefully. Thank you. So please bear with us. If the microphones aren't amazing yet, this is the first time using them. We will obviously have a little bit more of a play. So everything's a little bit of a learning curve, Gil. Yes. Yeah, so hopefully it all sounded good and there's no like popping or like you know. Oh, popping is going to be totally all over this. I so I'm, I'm, well, I'm apparently I'm these microphones have it built in as a pop filter oh so, well, let's hope so a funko pop filter so yeah so thank you everyone who's listening to this please comment down below some of your halloween stories any paranormal things that you may have experienced um and just what are your plans this year what are you doing with halloween what are you dressing up as um you know oh yeah people dress up don't they yeah people dress up now they do. Uh, um, I'm, a I'm a woman uh, <laughs> comment down below. Uh, if you've made it this far in the video, just comment. I am a woman. I am a woman. <laughs> Make sure you do remember that we these do get put onto Spotify, iTunes, and SoundCloud. So go follow us there. Maybe leave us a nice review. Um, Five stars on Yelp. Please. Five stars on Yelp, please. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so tr- maybe leave us a nice review. Um, so thank you. And always remember, hail Satan. Hail Satan. Um, yes, we'll see you all very soon. Bye, beautiful. Um, be five is basically gay. Be everything you want to be. Is there any bitch that they tell you that you can't be you? Why is that? Because you are Satan. Because you are Satan. <laughs>